American karate sensation Super Sage Northcutt is one of the most promising young stars in mixed martial arts, but having massive upside potential is nothing if that potential isn't realized. With boundless potential and endless possibilities, Northcutt showed and excited the MMA world. However, as his career progressed, he began to decline, and most of that decline can be attributed to the fact that he just didn't have proper guidance. Thankfully, he found the right direction under the tutelage of Eurija Faber, an MMA legend, and the exceptional team at Team Alpha Male in California. In a recent interview with ESPN MMA, Northcutt expressed his gratitude towards Faber and the team for the influence they have had on his career. You know, yeah, you're right. Before, uh, before training at Uriah Faber's gym, I was, I was studying to be an engineer in college. So I was going to a jiu-jitsu studio, but it's a little bit different getting to train jiu-jitsu for MMA. So getting to really have all that access to the knowledge with Uriah Faber and my coaches there at Team Alpha Male and the different training partners has really helped tremendously. And uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to show all the hard work that I've been putting in and how hard I've been training. Super Sage Northcutt is set to make his highly anticipated return to action against Pakistani MMA champion, the Wolverine Ahmed Mujtaba at One Fight Night 10, Johnson vs. Moraes III on Prime Video. Northcutt is making his comeback after a disastrous one championship debut in 2019 against Brazil's Cosmo Alexandra. Another fighter who will be returning to the one ring is Mikey Musumeci, who is set to defend his submission grappling title against Yemeni standout Osama Almerwai. And Musumeci is excited about the evolution of submission grappling contests and how one championship is at the forefront. Like a hunter stalking its prey, Mikey Musumeci is always on the attack, relentlessly pursuing a finish in every fight. As a passionate believer in the art of submission grappling, he admires the innovative approach taken by One Championship in developing its grappling division. Unlike other promotions, One has fully embraced grappling and made it an integral part of its events. In a recent interview with the South China Morning Post, Musumeci shared his thoughts on One's commitment to making grappling as thrilling and captivating as any striking-based martial art. With a rule set that is constantly evolving and a roster of world-class grapplers, One Championship is leading the way in promoting the beauty and excitement of submission grappling. So One is experimenting to try and see how they could make it exciting for everyone to watch. So I think it's great and it's going to take a few adjustments over time for us to perfect this rule set. But I do think it does. It's way easier to be exciting like you could have the two most exciting guys and you put them in any format and it'll still be exciting. One Fight Night 10. Johnson vs. Morace 3 will be broadcasted live from the One Steebank Center in Denver, Colorado on Friday, May 5th. And you can catch both of these fights plus much more when it goes live. Tai Ruotolo is also on the cards for One Fight Night 10, as he'll jump from his weight class into the middleweight category to take on Dutch champ Rainier de Ritter. However, there's one more fighter Tai wants to face off next, and fans are now getting excited at that possibility. Tai Ruotolo has issued a challenge to none other than BJJ legend and trash talker Gordon Ryan. The young prodigy is not content with just the online beef and back and forth on social media. Instead, he is seeking a payoff match against the grappling icon. Despite Ryan's reputation as a formidable opponent, Ruotolo is not intimidated. In an interview with the MMA superfan, he addressed the online beef between the two and emphasized his desire to prove himself on the mats against Ryan. I'm not a big fan of the whole online bickering. I'm not great at that whole part. I know I should be to sell more fights and stuff for sure. But Gordon, he doesn't end. He's definitely a keyboard warrior, I think is the term. I'm just going to let him do his thing online. If he says something too disrespectful, we'll check him in person. But until then, I'm just going to keep gaining weight and get the match with Gordon. I'm excited for that one. A showdown between two grappling legends would be an epic spectacle for the sport. But given the size difference between them, Tai Ruotolo might need some time to pack on some weight to level the playing field. Also, the fact that Gordon Ryan is not currently signed to one championship may hinder the possibility of this dream matchup. However, fans won't have to wait too long to witness Ruotolo's skills in action against a bigger opponent. At One Fight Night 10, he will go up against one middleweight world champion, Rainier de Ritter, in a submission grappling contest. De Ritter, a skilled MMA grappler and BJJ black belt, will demonstrate how well he can measure up against Ruotolo, a true grappling superstar. Meanwhile, Ruotolo aims to prove that technique and strategy can overcome size disparities in grappling. What do you think of these three big matchups? Share your predictions for One Fight Night 10 in the comments section. And while you're at it, we'd love to know whether you've enjoyed the video so far. 
If so, please subscribe to Valor Strategy Grappling and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos. With that said, let's move on to our next news of the day. Over the weekend, a number of Jiu-Jitsu's top GI and no-GI athletes competed at IBJJF Opens in both Miami and Chicago. Let's look at some of the strongest performances from several high-profile competitors. Canadian grappling sensation Brianna Stee-Marie made a remarkable transition to the IBJJF GI Black Belt Division, winning both the middleweight and openweight gold medals at the Miami Open. Although renowned for her accomplishments in no-GI competitions, Stee-Marie has also achieved significant success in the GI throughout her colored belt career, including pans and European gold as a purple belt. She will continue to showcase her skills in the GI at the upcoming Brasileiros. Meanwhile, ADCC veterans Roberto Jimenez and Roosevelt Sousa dominated the competition, with Jimenez claiming the heavyweight division and openweight gold in no GI before overcoming Gasayas Cavalcante in the openweight final. Sousa also emerged victorious in the no GI openweight category. In the GI division, two-time ADCC champion JT Torres clinched the middleweight gold potentially signaling a shift to more frequent GI competition. Other notable performances included Rene Sousa's historic buggy choke finish in IBJJF black belt competition and brown belt world no GI world champion Jacob the Hillbilly Hammer Couch's impressive IBJJF black belt debut, where he secured the heavyweight and openweight gold medals. Couch is scheduled to face Isaac Michel later this month at Who's Number One. Did you watch the IBJJF main events in Miami and Chicago? Sound off in the comments below. The biggest female card at One Fight Night 10 is the much-anticipated fight between Alice Anderson and Stamp Fairtex, and her training partner Adriano Moraes has predicted the winner in a fairly biased pick. Adriano Moraes has his sights set on his One Flyweight World Title Trilogy match with Demetrius Johnson at One Fight Night 10 in Colorado, but he is also excited to see how his American top team training partners, Alice Anderson and Ty Ruotolo, fare on the same card. Anderson, a stablemate of Moraes at American Top Team in Florida, will compete just before the co-main events, taking on three-sport superstar Stamp Fairtex in Adam Weight MMA action. Moraes believes that Anderson has made significant improvements to her all-around game and is looking forward to seeing her perform. She's a great fighter. She has very good jiu-jitsu and has been improving her striking and doing the transitions very well. I am very happy to see her evolving. We have trained grappling and striking together. She has been evolving a lot. Her wrestling has been improving a lot. She's more comfortable with her striking and has more power in jiu-jitsu. Moraes thinks that Anderson's clash with Stamp is a big opportunity to announce herself as a serious world title threat. However, he believes that Anderson's ground game will be crucial in winning this tie. This is a good fight for her to show her evolution and put her name into the world title challenger position. She needs to blend her wrestling alongside her jiu-jitsu. This can help her nullify Stamp's striking, which is her strong point. From there, I see her being able to impose her game. I believe she can submit Stamp or, if she is on top, land effective blows. Another teammate, Tai Ruotolo, will be giving a preview of how he handles a massive size disadvantage when he takes on one middleweight world champion Rainier de Ritter in a submission grappling contest. Even though de Ritter is a BJJ and judo black belt, Moraes thinks his young partner will be up for the task. I had the honor of training with Tai Ruotolo when I was in California last year. He is a very tough guy and it will make for a great fight. I believe because Tai is a grappler, his jiu-jitsu will be sharper. I see that he has more advantages. Do you agree with Adriano Moraes' assessment here? Let us know in the comments below. And lastly, we're going to discuss some sad news. The world of Brazilian jiu-jitsu has lost one of its pioneers. Robson Gracie, the son of Carlos and father of Renzo, has passed away at 88 years old. Robson was the second son of Carlos Gracie, one of the founding fathers of BJJ, and continued his family's legacy by becoming one of the few ninth-degree red belts in history. He was born and raised in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and sadly passed away there on April 28, 2023, at the age of 88. This announcement came from an Instagram post made by his granddaughter, Kira. She noted how important of a person he was in her life. The caption read, Today Jiu-Jitsu says goodbye to Grandmaster Robson Gracie, patriarch of the Gracie family and red belt, she wrote in Portuguese. I say goodbye to my eternal beloved grandfather, who is one of the most important people in my life. Robson Gracie is survived by his children Charles, Keila, Ralph, Flavia, Robson Jr., and notable MMA coach Renzo Gracie, while his other son Ryan passed away in 2007. 
He also has grandchildren who have continued the family name, such as BJJ standout Kira and MMA veteran Neiman. Valor Strategy Grappling extends its deepest condolences to the Gracie family during this time. And that concludes our news recap for today. What was your favorite memory of Robson Gracie in action? Share your thoughts in the comments below.